Look at the bottom of this expression and uh, let's see if we can rewrite 2. So we can rewrite 2 into 2 at the bottom. Top I have 1 plus 3. Because 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 over 2 is still 4. It's still 2. So that is the arithmetic mean of 1 and 3. Both are positive. So using this lemma, we know that it's always greater than or equal to the geometric mean of those two numbers. That is the square root of 1 times 3. Likewise, if we look at the 4 here. So 4 can be written as, again, half of 3 plus 5. Again, that is greater than or equal to the square root of 3 times 5. Likewise, 6, if we just want to write one more number, we have half of 1 plus 3, 3 plus 5, 5 plus the next odd number, 7, is greater than or equal to the square root of 5 times 7. So. I'll just uh, put it in this way instead of multiply it out, you know, just so we can uh, for you manipulate the equation further. So, since 2, 4, 6, they're all at the denominator. Therefore, if this is greater than or equal to, then that whole fraction should should be I should say this whole fraction should be change the direction of the inequality. It should be written as less than or equal to replacing those items onto the bottom. So in fact, that expression must be written as so 1 times 3 times 5 times, maybe let's just write one more term, times 7 times all the way up to, okay, let me just do 2, okay, I can still write 2 and minus 1. I'll write that down, over 2 times 4, times 6 times 8, all the way up to 2n. I can say that this is, I must change the direction of the inequality. This is greater than, less than or equal to, I'll still keep the top, 1 times 3 times 4. 5 times 7 all the way up to 2 and minus 1. And I replace 4, replace 2 with this. So square root of 1 times 3, replace 4 with that. So times square root of 3 times 5 times the square root of, uh, replace 6 with that. 5 times 7. Okay. <clears throat> 5, 6, then in the end I would have 2 and so 2 n two can be written as let me see 2 n can be half again half of 3 is 1 unit less than 4 5 is 1 unit larger than 4. So therefore, 2n minus 1 plus 2n plus 1. Right. So again, this is larger than or equal to the square root of 2n minus 1 times quantity 2n plus 1. Okay. So in the end, I shall replace 2n with this. So da, 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 I have to just clean this up. Okay, so yeah, to all the way up to 2n minus 1 times the square root of 2n plus 1, ok, 
Okay, again, just splitting the distributing the square root onto each of these terms. It's fine. It's also correct. So on top, I still have here, all the way up to 2n minus 1. So what's the pattern here? The pattern is that the benefit of me writing it like that is because I want to utilize the square root of 3 here. Also have a square root of 3 there. So in fact, square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. And this 3 can be cancelled out with that 3. Square root of 5, square root of 5 is in fact 5. 5 can cancel out with this 5. And square root of 7, the following square root of 7 multiplied to 7. 7 and 7 cancel out. So in fact, this cancel, this cancel, this and the following square root of 7 cancel with this 7. So according to this pattern, In the end, in fact, this square root of 2n minus 1, there must be another square root of 2n minus 1, exactly the same, previous, in front of that. So they multiply to give us 2n minus 1. So 2n minus 1, cancel. This cancel with that and the previous same item as this one. So in fact, what we are left with is, 1 is still here, 1 is still up here, and everything else is gone at the bottom. Everything else is gone at the, on to, everything on the bottom except for this term. So on the top, I still have 1. So, so in the end, I sh should have 1 over this term, square root of 2n plus 1. Okay, so after I've loosened the inequality, I can see that it is in fact a limit of 0 as n approaches infinity. Because obviously we have n at the bottom and just a constant at the top. So we can easily show that this approaches zero as n approaches infinity. Whether you want to use rigorous epsilon uh, n language definition or whatever, uh, which is uh, not essentially hard to show. So using squeeze theorem, this is already obviously larger than zero. And at the same time, it's no larger than the amount which also approaches zero. So using squeeze theorem, this our desired expression indeed approaches zero as n approaches infinity like we want. Okay, so Uh, like I said, I've proven the same result in a, in a previous video of mine using uh, by splitting the in, splitting the integral into two parts and using epsilon n definition. So this is a, just a different way, a more elementary method, just using the AMGM in 